Hey everybody, Claire here, and oh man, I am so excited to be talking about this book. Boom, How to Cook a Wolf by M.F.K. Fisher. She is just a miracle of a human being. I love her writing style. She is sort of, I mean, for any food blogger, food writer out there, she has to be a reference point for you. She just is amazing. And she's as important to me as Briette Savaran or James Beard or any of you know the great food writers. So I just love her. Also, she's real aggressive looking on the back. She was like she always has these intense like head braids and then like overplucked eyebrows and kind of a stern look on her face, which is funny because she has such a good sense of humor. The book How to Cook a Wolf is I mean, I don't want to sound too gushy, um, but it is like a seminal piece of American literature. This was written in 1942 in the middle of World War II, and this was also in the middle of when we were underway with food rationing. So, it, and also it was just after the Great Depression. So things were a little bleak when it came to the American table and what was on the American table. So um, I have to first off give my husband a shout out. This is a first edition. With the dust jacket, Okay, I know everyone's like, okay, what? But like, if you collect books at all, especially vintage or rare books, a first edition with the dust jacket is like kind of a big deal. And uh, this was a really generous gift of him to give to me. Uh, he gave it, I think it was an engagement gift. And the cool thing about it too, is you can find this still in press. It's really easy to find kind of wherever. There's been many printings of this book done. So I thought I would read the little poem at the beginning and read a little bit from the book. But this is a little poem by C.P.S. Gilman, which is kind of the inspiration for the title. There's a whining at the threshold. There's a scratching at the floor. To work, to work in heaven's name. The wolf is at the door. And that's the spirit of this book. The idea is uh, the wolf at the door is an allegory or metaphor for hunger. And when you have the wolf at the door scratching, you have to get to work. Don't get scared. Don't get nervous. Get to work. And even the titles are fabulous. Um, how to be sage without hemlock. How to catch the wolf. How to be. How to distribute your virtue. How to boil water. How to keep alive. How to be cheerful though starving. Like, oh, this book is just mm, everything. In spite of all the talk and study about our next years and all the silent ponderings about what lies within them for our sons, it seems plain to us that many things are wrong in the present ones which can be changed, must be changed. Now, when the hideous necessity of the war machine takes steel and cotton and humanity, our own private personal secret mechanism must be stronger for selfish comfort, as well as for the good of the ideals we believe we believe in. And um, then she goes on to say, one of the stupidest things in an earnest but stupid school of culinary thought is that each of the three daily meals should be balanced. Appropriately, how to comfort sorrow is the dessert chapter which I just think is such a lovely, lovely sentiment. Coffee, by the way, is one thing which cannot be made skimpily. If you are to economize with it, do so by using it less often, but never by trying to make it with less coffee and cooking it longer. And it just goes on about like how, just please don't mess with coffee. It just is the thing to not, to just, it's like it'll destroy people's souls if you go and make like a crappy cup of coffee. Anyway, I just love this book. I mean, to, this truly is like just such a time machine. It sends you back there and it teaches you so much about how in the 40s, how people viewed food and how important food was um, from a morale standpoint, uh, from a cultural standpoint, it was essential. And anyway, this book is also essential. Um, as I've been doing in all of these videos, uh, it's the end. So if you wanna find this book, you probably can find How to Cook a Wolf on Amazon, to be completely honest. But if you wanna get a vintage copy, try to check out Bonnie Slotnick's. Um, she's amazing. You can email her and she'll help you find a copy. Uh, you can also check out abebooks.com. You can check out eBay. But yeah, this one actually I think is on Amazon and even like Google Books probably has it. Anyway, it's one of my favorites, I love it. All right, well, thank you so much guys and I'll talk to you later, bye.